Hello once again, fourth graders. This is Miss Wheeland. Today we're going to talk about multiplying fractions by a whole number. And when we're multiplying those fractions, this year in fourth grade, they're all going to be unit fractions that we're multiplying by. So think back a couple weeks ago. I know you talked about unit fractions. What are they? Unit fractions. Unit fractions always have a one for the top. So that could be one half, one third, one fifth, one seventh. Doesn't matter what the denominator is, the numerator always needs to be one, okay? In fifth grade, you'll move on to multiplying the fractions by another one. So there are two different ways that we could do this. We could use repeated addition right because we know multiplication is just repeated addition if i say three times three that's equal to adding three three times what number how many times we repeat it okay then the other way that we could do it is a model and i have some fraction tiles you, however, can log on to my math and use the virtual ones um, in the tools section, okay? But I'm gonna use these little guys. You can find them on my math in class link. All right, so our first problem is each card on a trivia game has six questions. Each question represents one sixth of the questions on the card. Caleb correctly answered four of the questions. What fraction of the questions on the card did he answer correctly? Okay, let me read that again. There's some extra information in there. Each card on a trivia game has six questions. Six questions. Each question represents one sixth of the questions on the card. Caleb correctly answered four, so four for Caleb. What fraction of the questions on a card did he answer correctly? Okay, so if Caleb got four and each question is one sixth of the questions, then that's our problem. So let's do the first method, the repeated addition. So four times we're going to have one sixth. One sixth plus one sixth plus one sixth plus one sixth. Okay, if I'm adding up parts of fractions, my denominator is not going to change. So it's still going to be six. But my numerator though, one, two, three, four, I have four sixths. Four. Okay, and that's our final answer right there, except we can put it into simplest form because we know how to do that. Factors for four are one, two, and four. Factors for six are one, two, three, and six. Greatest common is two. So divide by two over two. Four divided by two is two. Six divided by two is three. Okay. So he answered two thirds of the questions. So the other way we could do that, if our problem is four times one sixth is models. Like I said, let me find, here's one, here's two, here's three, and here's four, right? I have four sixths. But that is equal to one third and one third. So four sixths or two thirds in simplest form. Ta da! Um, I'm going to do the rest of these with. Um, actually, you know what? I'm gonna show you another way to do it because I think you can handle it. I know you can handle it. Let's do a different problem. Okay. 
Hmm. If we have five times three tenths, ooh, that one's not a unit fraction, but we know how to turn this into a unit fraction, right? So we have five, and this is three times one tenth, right? We know that. Three tenths is three times one tenth, three tenths, okay? And then the associative property of multiplication says we can change where our parentheses go. So I'm gonna change it to five times three and leave the one tenth out by itself, okay? Leave that guy out by itself. All right, now this, we definitely know how to do that. Five times three, 15, okay? And then, so we have, bring this guy down, 15 times one tenth. Well, that's just our repeated addition or our models, but I also know this guy is the same as that. And when we multiply, we're gonna multiply straight across. 15 times one, 15. One times 10, 10. I have 15 tenths. That is equal to, well, let's take out our 10 tenths. And left over, we have five. Remember this part is worth one, so we have one, and then we have five tenths left over, five tenths. So five times three tenths is equal to one and five tenths. One and five tenths, simplest form, is one and one half. Oop, I went off the screen a little bit, sorry guys. But you know what one and one half looks like. Okay, I'm gonna do another one, but I'm gonna do it this way, um, cause this one's a little bit more complicated, okay? do four times two thirds. Okay, so we need to break this up into multiplying um, the number of unit fractions. So how many parts do we have? Two, and the unit fraction is one third. So we have two times one third. And what are we multiplying that by? Four. Okay, an associative property says we can group it any way we want. So I am gonna group the four and the two together. And then we'll throw the one third on the outside. Okay, four times two is eight. Times one third. What is eight times one third? Eight thirds. We have an improper fraction. So we take out three thirds, that's three, and another three thirds, that's six. We have two left over. So one hole, two holes, and two parts. Okay, I'll do that one more time. Let's see. Ooh, I like this one. I love multiplying anything by 11. It's pretty fun. Okay, 11 times 2 eighths. We need to turn this into the unit fraction times the number of unit fractions. So the unit fraction for 2 eighths, remember we just want a 1 on top, would be 1 eighth. And how many eighths do we have? We have two of them. So two times one eighth. And we're multiplying that whole thing by 11. Okay. So associative property, move these around. I'm keeping the 11, two, one eighth, 11, two, one eighth. I'm just changing where the parentheses are. Everything's still multiplied together. Okay. 11 times two is 22 times one eighth, that would be 22 eighths. 
eighths. You probably knew that though, huh? Okay, so when we have 22 eighths, that's an improper fraction. So if we take out 8 eighths first, we can take out another one, which is 16. And we can't take out any more. We can just take out 6 eighths from that. One, two holes. And 6 eighths. Which... We have our factors for six are one, two, three, and six, and our factors for eight are one, two, four, and eight. Two is the greatest common factor here, so we'll divide by two over two, and that gives us two and three fourths. Ta -da. Go ahead and do your Google form, work through those problems on paper, um, and let us know if you need some more practice with it.